Hi, my name is Megan Edwards. I'm a graduate student with the School of Applied Sciences in the Department of Health, Exercise Science, and Recreation Management at the University of Mississippi. I've been working with Dr. Paula Prinzi, Assistant Professor of Health, Exercise Science, and Recreation Management on a project which will be published in an upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We know that mood-related disorders, such as major depression disorder, affect nearly 10% of U.S. adults. And due to this prevalence, as well as the many notable um, deleterious outcomes associated with mental health conditions, it's important to study these topics. Specifically, physical activity has been uh, suggested to be an effective and appealing treatment for individuals suffering from depression, anxiety, or other mental health conditions due to its many global health benefits. And we've seen in both acute and chronic physical activity based interventions its ability to attenuate the symptomology associated with these mental health conditions. It's also important to investigate the effects of sedentary behavior on these conditions as recent, um, recent work has suggested that there might be independent associations between physical activity and sedentary behavior on various health outcomes. Specifically, much of the sedentary behavior literature um, looking at health outcomes has been epidemiological or cross-sectional in nature, which does not really allow for applying, implying cause and effect relationships. Thus, we felt it important to explore sedentary behavior via an intervention-based approach. The existing intervention studies on sedentary behavior are mainly focused around minimizing sedentary behavior via physical activity breaks. We were interested in looking at the opposite, so essentially inducing sedentary behavior in an active sample to see if it had negative related consequences. And we felt if we did see significant effects of this inducing sedentary behavior intervention, that would provide good evidence of a cause and effect relationship between sedentary behavior and the outcomes we were exploring. Specifically, we recruited active young adults between the ages of 18 and 35. These adults had to be considered active by at least meeting the USDHHS guidelines for physical activity of 150 minutes per week of physical activity. To assess physical activity levels, we had individuals complete the International Physical Activity Questionnaire short form, which is a seven item questionnaire and individuals who self-reported greater than 150 minutes per week of moderate to vigorous physical activity were considered eligible for participation in our study. They were then given a, an Actigraph GT9X accelerometer to wear for one week as a way for us to objectively confirm their physical activity levels. So these individuals wore the Actigraph accelerometer at the mid-axillary line of the right hip at the level of the iliac crest and were instructed to just wear it at least 10 hours per day and we needed at least four valid days of accelerometry data um, with a valid day consisting of at least 10 hours of data collection time or accelerometer wear time. So individuals came back in after one week of normal physical activity wearing the accelerometer at which point we analyzed the data to confirm their activity levels. Individuals whose levels were adequate via the accelerometry as well as their self-report were still considered eligible for our study and were then randomized into either an intervention or control group. Specifically, the intervention group was asked to eliminate all exercise for one week as well as to undergo a step reduction where they were instructed to get no more than 5,000 steps per day. The control group, on the other hand, was instructed to simply maintain regular physical activity levels. Uh, prior to the one-week intervention, both groups performed baseline measurements of their depression and mood profile. The depression was measured via the nine item patient health questionnaire and mood profile was measured using the 65 item profile of mood states questionnaire. Notably, both the intervention and the control groups were given a DigiWalk SW200 pedometer to wear for the week um, as a method to measure their daily step counts. After one week of either eliminating exercise and step reduction in the intervention group or normal physical activity within the control group, both groups returned to our lab for us to reassess their depression via the PHQ-9 and their mood profile via the POMS. The control group was finished with our study, so they turned in their pedometers, and the intervention group was asked to continue wearing their pedometers for one week, but to 
reassume their normal levels of physical activity. So no exercise reduction and no step reduction for one week. At which point the intervention group then came back in for a final assessment of their depression and their mood profiles. So when looking at the results of the PHQ-9 depression scores, we did see that with the step reduction and um, taking away exercise in the intervention group, depression scores significantly increased. And then after the reintroduction of exercise and having no step reduction, the depression scores then significantly decreased. We saw similar results with regards to the profile of mood states in that individuals in the intervention group, when they had no exercise and a step reduction, they reported higher scores on the palms indicating worse mood profile. And once physical activity was increased, exercise was reintroduced for one week, they reported lower scores on the palms indicating a better mood profile. Ultimately, we feel the significant findings of our study provide evidence of a cause and effect relationship between sedentary behavior and depression and mood profile in active young adults. We also feel these findings underscore the importance of maintaining physical activity levels as well as avoiding uh, sedentary behavior to avoid the associated factors related to depression and negative mood profile. With future research, we would be interested in introducing a third group to a similar intervention study. And this third group would also undergo a step reduction, but would be allowed to engage in a few moderate to vigorous physical activity bouts throughout the week of step reduction. Comparing the results between that group and the step reduction group that had no um, moderate to vigorous physical activity would really allow us to confirm our findings and see if it is indeed sedentary behavior that is causing the negative associated outcomes um, that we observed with regards to depression and mood profile. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.